Hey, if you like pondering spooky tapes and you ever wondered what would it be like if they talked about video games or played Dungeons and Dragons instead, why not try our other shows? We got Press Start Turbo, where we talk with people from the games industry like the Dredge developers and check out games you tell us to play, Perilous Storytelling, which is our sci-fi, fully sound designed D&D campaign with an original soundtrack by yours truly, and Please Stop Talking, where we just shoot the shit and just hang out. You can find all of our shows on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. And now, on with the spooky, spooky show. In the deepest and darkest of woods, where not even the light of the moon can penetrate, two vile creatures indulge in dark delights and have conquered their comrades into capitulation. Now they wander these lands watching scary cinema, and there's a good chance you're next. Mandalore and Billy invite you to ponder some spooky tapes. <laughs> Get your notes, get your boats. Dagon's here, don't float your goats. When you're on a roll, in a hole, Dobby gapes for Dagon. <laughs> Dobby what? What? Dobby, Dobby, Dobby what? Dobby elf! Dobby love pussy! No! No, I was, <laughs> no! I, I, I was thinking of the, the rape hole scene when Brendan went, oh, this is just like what happened to Dobby. Oh, uh, <laughs> no! Like, no I didn't figure out what he was talking it. about. It's your fault! No, don't you fucking dare, man. You're the one who said this is just like what happens to Dobby. And no, I no, who brought up Dobby? I said that. I said that, that I said about that. Dobby. Whoa. I'm the one that said it. Billy what, is, said what were you it. talking about? I added on. What did what did you, Billy, what did you mean that I, that happened to Dobby? I I, I, I made a joke and I, I because she was struck up like Dobby and <laughs> on the have you guys ever seen the <laughs> In the what? Dobby the pussy indulgence. There's no. Sh- sh- he just shut dances up, in shut that. Up, shut up. No, stop <laughs> talking about dulge, dulge, Dobby dulge, pussy, pussy indulgence. Pussy indulgent. I'm fucking losing it. No, no. There's one video where Dol- Dolby? <laughs> Dobby is on a cross, and the way that she was strung up in the fucking hole, it looked like Dobby. She kind of looked like Dobby. And no, this is. We're in. This is we're it. We're not. Yes, we are. <laughs> I've never seen Dobby on a cross. I didn't get to do my funny voice. Voice. I don't want to start with Dobby Pussy Fine. Indulgence. Fine, we'll do that and then <laughs> switch to whatever. <laughs> you to keep the Dobby Pussy Indulgence in. It has in. to be in now. <laughs> Welcome back to Pondering Spooky Tapes. Today's movie is Dagon. Today's movie is Dobby Pussy Indulgence. He's <laughs> <laughs> really fucking losing it. I'm fucking going crazy. Just like the people at Not In's Mouth, so too has Billy started to worship an evil fish god. <laughs> Dobby? This is all an elaborate <laughs> pitch for the Tumnus Tunnels now on No, 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 okay. 2001. I don't know if anybody's no, ever going to hear about the shut Tumnus up. Tunnels shut now. Up. Oh, that's right, because we lost the commentary track. We're just going to have to explain it, and it, it's going to make a, lot, a whole lot of sense. There's nothing to explain. It was just... <laughs> what if what if Mr. What? Tumnus was chasing you through the tunnels? That was what it. If, okay, you know those basic <laughs> horror horror games on like itch.io where like you have to collect like my, collect my pages? Uh, what if it was collect collect my Turkish delights. You run around <laughs> tunnels. <laughs> you run around in tunnels yeah. collecting Turkish delights. You have to collect Mr. Tumnus's eight Turkish delights. Dagon. And Cicada's gonna compose it and it'll sound terrifying. Dagon. It'll be ambient banging. Speaking of uh, hi Cicada, welcome hey, to the Cicada. show. <laughs> I- <laughs> 2001's Dagon, directed by Stuart Gordon, horror Dagon movie legend, low bu- no, 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 low budget <laughs> horror legend. He made Reanimator, From Beyond, Dolls, Castle Freak. Oh, and uh, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids as well. Yeah. Uh, he's a frequent collaborator with Brian Usna. We watched uh, Society oh, yeah. starring Ezra Gooden as Mandrake. That's not his name. That's not his name. That's, his name is Paul. That, that doesn't matter. Mandrake? I, I meant to say Mandark. What am I? F- Dude, I'm actually <laughs> losing it. You're on that Goblet of Fire bubble cover. <laughs> Mandrake does sound like some kind of sorcerer. <laughs> 
I mean, it was uh, like Mandrake Root, which was for potions and all that. He's a voice actor for a lot of games like Dragon Age and Shadows of Mordor. We need to specify voice actor as in voice like actor. Blacksmith in town number five. I mean, yeah, he has multiple roles. Like, I, I'm pretty sure in Shadow of Mordor, all it says is orc. And that could be any fucking bike. That's, there's a lot of orcs in that game. There's a lot of orcs. What if he's the one who who does like the... <laughs> Maybe he did the... <laughs> Maybe he did the... <laughs> in this movie as well. Yeah. Uh, also starring Francisco Rabal, who was in William Friedkin's Sorcerer and was a very, very accomplished actor. And his last scene in any movie ever is in this, where he gets his face peeled off. <laughs> where his face is slowly peeled off while he sings to God. He's like, it'll be fine. But he's like looking at what he can't look at it. You'll be okay. And also Ra- oh God. Raquel Mironio, who plays Barbara in this movie. Oh, yeah. So for those who haven't seen the movie, well, I mean, it's fucking weird that you would watch a discussion about the movie, but this is a adaptation of Shadow over Innsmouth and Dagon by H.P. Lovecraft. And it was adapted by Dennis Paoli, who also did a lot of uh, other Lovecraft inspired projects with Stuart Gordon and Brian Usner, like Reanimator and From Beyond. And this is big font Shadow over Innsmouth and a very tiny, tiny yes. what if Dagon was there yeah. too. I, I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure they chose Dagon because they were like one word is easier to sell than Shadow yeah. over Innsmouth on like a big poster. Although to be fair, the poster's butt fucking ugly. Yeah, it's terrible. Yeah, it's There's not a great a, looking. Even the Blu-ray I got that's pretty nice. It's not like an amazing cover or anything. The entire movie has this Spy Kids sheen over it that I can't shake. It looks like a vampire movie in some of the covers. It's low budget. That's how it'd be. Have you guys seen? I, I need to show you guys the VHS cover in Europe because I screamed when oh I saw it. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Pray for us. Pray for us. It's so ass, dude. That looks like an Italian zombie movie from like the 70s. Zombie 3 shit. Oh, God, it looks bad. Either way, what did everybody think of Dagon? I love this movie. I'm looking at Brendan and in fear. I'm sorry. I also love this movie. <laughs> it's it's a, it's a mess, though, is the thing. Yeah, it's, it's hard like, to I love recommend. Scenes, but it's... It's kind of a mess put together. I will hold off while you say nice things about the movie. No, because you could say lots of mean things and I'll probably go, yeah, you're right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah the, that's the thing. Like, we're not blind or anything. We're, we're, we know what this is. Like, the best, the parts where we're going, oh, cool, is like when you're the you're, first yeah, 40 minutes going through town, seeing weird people shambling around. Yes. Oh, man. And just like being chased by these things where he doesn't understand what's happening. Literally, the first 40 minutes of this movie are the entirety of shadow over in smith yeah and then the rest of the movie is fan fiction <laughs> so oh cool makeup cool effects fish fiction sometimes cgs hasn't aged remarkably well mm. but hey look at all that look at all that cool makeup is prosthetics yeah. have on people like, they look great as in smith people yeah. yeah the makeup effects are fantastic they're made by uh, David Ma- David Ma- Marty, who uh, did the makeup effects for a lot of Guillermo del Toro movies like Pan's Labyrinth. So yeah. you can fucking you can see the pedigree on the screen. That shit looks amazing. God, Pan's Labyrinth looks so fucking awesome. Uh, but yeah, no, th- I, this is the second time I watched this movie. First time I was uh, incredibly drunk, and I just remember Mandy saying. You gotta see this shit. You love you love Reanimator. <laughs> you gotta see this yeah. shit. And then I, I think I can't remember most of what happened that night, but I remember get going out of it and being like, "That was so." Dagon cool. was fucking awesome, man. I love fish. <laughs> <laughs> you should do a sound redesign of the movie and fix it, so we're not oh, hearing yeah. potion bubbling. That could fix a lot of issues. If I could get like a fucking master of just yeah. the audio. Like but I maybe could there's a probably five point one of it, it or something somewhere. It's like that's never coming. It's never coming on Atmos there's at no, least. There's no way there's a fucking five point one of this. There movie. might be if someone's re released. No it. way. I mean, I, I, oh shoot, I have the movie. I have the Blu-ray because I we we watched this on the Vestros. 
Vestros? The Vestros version of this movie, which is like the... Okay, I, th- I think that's as good as it gets then. Yeah, that's the collector's edition Blu-ray Vest- that Vestron, is... Vestron, Vestro. Vest... Yeah, yeah, that one. Oh yeah, the cover for that one looks more like uh, Phantasmagoria. Well, the, even those are, those are adventure games, not movies. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, I, I don't think it has 5.1. Something about glasses men finding out freakish little histories. Yeah, no, the, it does not. But Brendan, what did you think of Dagon? I... Hated it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I did not like it. Now, that's uh, th- th- my own reservations aside. I can appreciate the 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 good things in the movie, like the set design, the fucking creepy villagers, the 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 nerdy guy yelling. You two possibilities: I, I kill you, or uh, I trust you. There are two possibilities. It is um, rough when your main like lead actor isn't great in a movie. No, he's not great. I legitimately thought, and he's not, but I had to double check. I legitimately thought he was one of the guys from the GameStop television. Oh, he's not. He's no, not. I double checked, uh, but I did think he was one of the guys mean, from GameStop. Of course TV. not. Who knows? Anything's possible. No, it's like I told you during the movie. Like during that period, they had ten million guys who looked like that who they would pick out for to be the nerd and things. I guess that's true. No, but like the 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 thing is, is like the GameStop TV guy always almost looks like that. Like the and he's always like a voice actor who got has like incredibly bit like minor roles in anime and like video games and stuff. And then somehow, just for like two years, I'm the GameStop TV guy. Hello. So I was just like, this guy might have been the GameStop TV guy or the EB Games guy. Because when I think of GameStop, yeah, I think of Copy That, which is EB Games. Yeah, copy, copy That. Welcome to EB Games. I think of four years of hell. I've... <laughs> I hear Fortunate Son playing. Um, <laughs> when it comes to, I mean, the Cthulhu myth, mythos and, and Eldritch horror, I don't know. I've just never really, I always try to get into it. And every time I attempt to or get into it, I'm just like, eh. I'm going to be honest. It really depends on what you're trying to get in. Like with Cthulhu, it, I feel like the books are the only way to get into it properly. I've, I've tried to read the books. I've tried to play games. I've I've tried to watch yeah. like TV shows based on it that are like intertwined with Stephen King's works. And it just never, it just bounces off every time. And I think it's because I have this memory ingrained of like somebody I knew in high school who would greet me with Cthulhu Photogen. Oh, like the oh, epic God. bacon uh, Cthulhu era. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and that era poisoned all, almost all Eldritch horror for me. So I have an aversion to it. I think overall, like I, I, I'm not just a dude face ripping off. I had to look away because I'm a big baby. Well, uh, it, that's a pretty gruesome scene, even by yeah, no, that standards. like even it's like it's like holy shit, this is rough. I mean, I kind of cons- when it comes to movies, I consider myself a bit of a gore hound. I love a good face ripping, but even that that was like that one's fucking, rough. Whoa, man, it's really good. I think I went in expecting this to be like the thing that finally pulls me in. And I feel like my dislike generally comes from like a place of this did not grab me. That's fair. Um, And I don't think it's a hundred percent the movie's fault. I think it's more so my fault, but I just uh, did the, the mm. acting, the 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 fucking fish octopus legs, the fucking yeah, <laughs> dude, that was awesome. The, the, I'm gonna burn myself and then fall into the hole anyway, and then you got to look at my like the funny splish splash. He the, splashes them with fuel a little bit and then lights them on fire. Well, okay, well that 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 doesn't have anything to do with Cthulhu. <laughs> Those were though well, that, you're you're kind of in the in the realm of the fa- the fish fiction that they did afterwards you know <laughs> to be fair most adaptations of lovecraft stuff i've never oh they're yeah like they're it's it's like um the actual call of cthulhu dark corners of the earth game yeah usually like or sinking city there's stuff that's really cool in them but it's also like something's not right in these parts or it's just most stuff that's the best lovecraft stuff are loose adaptations that aren't are more inspired like um Bloodborne is an excellent example of Lovecraft yes. horror that's not Lovecraft. I do love Bloodborne. Signalis is a great example of Lovecraft horror that's yes. not Lovecraft directly. But I guess there's some King and Yellow in there too, yeah. but this is the same shit. I, I feel like, I, I don't know, when it when it comes to Lovecraft, you have to, it, it has to be the books because it's, it's it relies such on a, imagination. Yeah, that's like, I mean, because if you can see, the, like, the, you see Dagon in this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, and they yeah. had a clever shot where they just had the camera rise up like yeah. from the sea and you see the perspective of Dagon you see how big he is but then they had the CG one grab the lady at the end they just showed CG Dagon and man it looks so ass it's it terrible. looks real bad 
Yeah, no, you, you, I feel like it, you have to read the books. Um, also, because when you read the books, it's basically like reading the monologues of the most racist man alive. Because all that shit about being scared of the unknown is basically... <laughs> dude, it's so weird. It's just this racist man just realizing like... I'm afraid of the unknown. Have you seen the Willy Wonka experience? Oh, man. Are we it's really doing it? It's the unknown. Are we really doing They've this? Already yeah, we have to. They've already announced the unknown movies in production. <laughs> they have. I know. I know. God, dude, I'm so tired. God, the state of fucking horror movies, man. Fucking Blood and Honey 2. Shut up. Fuck uh, you. Well, it's God, not it everyone pisses does. me off. Steamboat it's like pooping. Steamboat Willie, we're going to make him have a knife. It's easy. Yeah, Steamboat shitty. I'm tired of it. Yeah, it's easy. People will talk about it. Oh, so it's like you spend man. $10 on it and you get some more free marketing. Skin him rank 2. It's in a mall this time. <laughs> oh, I'd rather die. Be, that's a better location, actually. I, th I think it'd be really fucking funny if they kept, if they made like eight Skin ring movies and they raised the stakes every single time. Like just the building getting getting stuck into this sunken one's place. In an keeps building. Getting... This one's in a mall. <laughs> this one's in the Pentagon. Joe Biden has has been skinnamarinked in skinnamarink <laughs> for presidential I, pardon. I can't find the toilet. Oh, damn it, I've been skinnamarinked again. <laughs> 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 Wasn't that a bit? I swear that was already a bit on Twitter. That was a bit on Twitter. Fuck. I think about it all the time. <laughs> uh, to quote the people who did not want to make this movie, because this movie was for 15 years, they tried to get this movie made and uh, they it, it just nobody wanted to make it. Every every producer they went to was just like, no, I don't think this is, works. Most of them all said, and this might be why, uh, Brendan, you aren't, uh, super into Lovecraft. Fish aren't relatable or scary. Make it about vampires or werewolves. What is that a quote? Yeah, fish aren't that, fish aren't relatable. That literally what? me. That <laughs> you you can't relate to fish. Mm. Well, I get no. I get people who are like, oh, I don't really find supernatural things scary over like what if there was a movie where a guy with a big knife breaks into your house in the dead of night because that's terrifying and can happen yeah what if a man I ran just, around a fish town yeah I, I just i just don't get the pivot to werewolves and vampires because they sell better what's wrong with the fish it's like the black lagoon creature he's a big i fish. do i do find i do find the fish scarier than vampires though like the fucking some of those like with the weird fuck popped out eyes oh yeah man they're, they're good they're, they're creepy they're great I, was supposed to say, I thought it was a great idea for them to kind of establish that like the fish people wear masks of like uh skin people because like you know at certain certain points like it, you see it it's like that's just a dude wearing a mask but then like it makes sense like in the movie and it's like oh yeah of course it's a fish guy wearing a mask you know? yeah the fucking yeah their faces are like falling off they're a trying to bit. establish a sense of normalcy within the yep. absurd like they're still shambling around their uniforms and trying to pretend like the I roles think, are the same yeah i think that i think the 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 like skinned people was my like okay i i honestly maybe i would like it better if they were just like straight up with it what like, do you just, mean like they're just fish people straight up but they are well they, like, they instead of like having the the flesh masks oh and so like a combination yeah the combination i think i think i think parts of this movie felt like if you straighten some bits out like the 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 leather face-esque fish people wearing the human skin the fucking the lady who's like you are my brother oh that, um, i mean yeah. that, i know that's, that's a lot of the fish is. fiction i understand i understand i get it i know i know no, i know i'm talking about fiction. the movie no that's no that's uh that's actually in the book oh if, if i mean okay but a little bit oh that, I, that's one thing i just kind of realized as i was like as we were talking like lovecraft works better when it's a book because you're reading the actual thoughts of the character and that's where the horror comes from when you see the actor look down and real he really like he sees like oh i have gills now he looks scared but you don't understand like you just you just see a scared man but when you read like the reasoning behind why he's scared and why he's like like turning into a fish is like driving him fucking crazy that's so much scarier i mean i think he could pull it off if you had a better actor it just oh we got I this mean, guy yeah maybe not because it's him looking down at his scales he's going what and he just kind of rolls over he's go he he's doing the uh hank hill uh, like his girlfriend has gotten her arms ripped off to be tortured by dagon for who knows how long a fish woman crawls up to him and he just kind of rolls over like don't talk to me where it's like yeah he's he's trying to do like i've just given up but he's he's all over the place like he hears a horrible fucked up story about how the town fell into worshiping Dagon and he goes into his two possibilities catchphrase either you're crazy or you're drunk He's like see I'm crazy and drunk but I speak truth he should have said that before he lit himself on fire 
Two, two possibilities. possibilities. <laughs> yeah. He should have. I light myself fun. on fire and I freaking die. The other possibility is, hmm, fish uh, sister girlfriend get to see big hole. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> Brendan. No, no, no. No big hole for the sister but he does. band. He, get, he gets to see. No, he gets to see the big hole. The big hole at the end. They got oh, a big hole in this that movie. big hole. That yes. big hole. Oh, the, will you the fucking, big hole. Wait a minute. Were you, no. fucking, were you fucking thinking I, that, that, that no. I was making a, a jocular joke about octopus ass? No. Fucking God. You have dude, some obsessions. I don't know what to tell you. Here. I don't know what to that tell you. Disrespect here. She don't even got toes. Nope. Come on. No, she does not. She. <laughs> I, 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 honestly, I, I think it's really funny that instead of giving her like a, the bottom of an octopus with like multiple fucking they just give they her, just two, give her octopus two octopus legs. <laughs> That's so and good. she just walks with them. <laughs> She's the, got the fat the fucking scene, slappers, dude. dude. The one scene where she like he sets himself up. What was it? He gets stabbed or whatever, and she's on the floor, and then she just like fucking slithers super fucking quick towards him. That fucking <laughs> it's so funny. It looks like she's floating towards him, dude. Uh one thing that drives me crazy about this movie though is that it is in, almost entirely shot on handheld. Mm. Yeah, yeah. especially the beginning on the boat is so rough. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like it could work well in the in town when he's like, like when they had the camera move over and you see the dude with like the bowler hat and the coat kind of shambling through the alleyway. But it's kind of like his perspective of like moving through the town confused and he's seeing weird shit coming into frame. Yeah. But when it's just like two people talking on a boat and the camera's constantly moving around, it's like, it's so distracting. It's also just, I feel like I'm going to puke. Yeah. It's just constant. Just uh, It's to make you feel seasick as well. It's super sad because like there's there's some actual good shots in the movie and stuff and like oh yeah, oh, yeah. You, like, the, that that when when Barbara is like walking downtown mm -hmm. and the camera pans like to the left and then you see like another alley with some fish guy going <laughs> like man that's good yeah, yeah. that's yeah. some good shit or the ch when he, when you look up at the church stuff oh. It's so cool. They got their mileage out of that location, that town they filmed in. Oh, yeah. Because it is so decrepit. It's perfect. When they were filming in, in Spain, it was like a... They, they filmed in a place basically called the Salem, Massachusetts of Spain. Because it was very... It was full of, like, witch imagery and stuff like that. Oh, wow. That did yeah. work out. One thing is they had to switch the movie from the U.S. to Spain. So instead of Innsmouth, it's uh, in, in, in Boca. In Boca. Boca meaning mouth. Get it? Imbs Imbs mouth. Oh, in the mouth. Yeah. And then Cicada yeah. may have seen the RE4 merchant somewhere on the dock. <laughs> he was in there. Um, I, 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 no, he he gets back at the end when the when the two chuckleheads are looking down at the camera and you have like big big eye and the oh, yeah. RE4 salesman. Yeah, yeah. Because we're wondering like, hey, how RE4 is this? Because it's kind of super fucking RE4. Also Spain. It's so I fucking RE4. love all the stupid, doofy fight scenes in this fucking dude. Movie. Power oh Rangers! God. It's like Power Rangers. It's like Power Rangers fighting the Putty Squad. It is so fucking funny to watch this guy's like at the beginning of the movie. Oh, I'm checking the stock market on my laptop on its scene. Where do you get the internet? Where do you get the internet from? Yeah, that's where I'm like. They didn't satellite. have Wi-Fi back then. They just have Wi-Fi back there. They could they could go to the police website. He's nerdy. He's, he has internet. But the combat had more when hit sounds. It was very. It did, but I mean, remember when he hit that guy with the Nokia phone? <laughs> oh yeah, and they said, "I've got to get a bigger phone." Oh, I have. I have <laughs> gotta a get great, a better plan. I have an amazing story about that specific big phone uh, scene. So. <laughs> That's actually something that happened. What do you mean that happened? While they were filming in Spain, th this is a scene that was added in because it happened to Brian Usna's wife. She was getting... She hit a fish man with a phone? No, she was getting mugged in Spain. Oh. And she just got her no not Nokia and started beating the shit out of the guy who was holding her at gunpoint with her phone. During the struggle, he just fucking ran away. And then she turned around to Brian Usen and said, I wish I had a bigger phone. <laughs> Apparently incredible. it actually happened. And the people all like they the people on set were like, that's so funny. We should add your mugging in this movie. <laughs> what an insane thing. Oh that puts it in a whole new light. Like, holy shit. Bigger phone was real after everything. <sighs> big phone attacks the fish people. I do wonder, phone. though, if there was some like Spanish 
Civil War stuff there that might be kind of not lost in translation, I guess, because Stuart Gordon did it. Because when they had the dude who rolls into town to like basically pimp out Dagon to them because Jesus isn't giving them enough fish. Yes. When Jesus, you know, is kind of known for he should give you fish. Because he had like the black robe and the hat on, he kind of looked like he would be on the um oh uh, like kind of like the like the Franco sort of look on him. Yeah, so he's, he's like, oh no, come to me, like abandon your old god and come join, come join Dagon. I was like, I wonder if they're they're lay- layering something there, but I'm not sure. That's actually one thing I really like adding adding a whole like flashback scene. I thought that scene was fucking awesome. Oh yeah, it's way better than it's Shutter so Smith when he just reads the history of the town. Yeah, and compared and, like, to like the eyes of a child seeing it all change. And it's also like the the way that uh, uh, Rabal uh, just recounts the entire scene is just like, oh man, he's a great actor. He's like the only one that's like he is a fucking high caliber actor in this movie that's and he the, sells it, goes it. With, like those kind of like aging actors they always do like one last terrible movie because like the guy from like that played like m bison in street fighter right like he was like a legit good actor and then he's just like he does street fighter that dies you know like wait he actually he passed away at after street fighter was his last movie yeah. oh wow what yeah if i'm not mistaken oh, no i didn't know that he oh you're right what the fuck that was his final performance? Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. But for you, it was just a Tuesday. <laughs> I actually like the performance quite a bit, but it's just sort of like, it's a tragedy to like have like a good career. <laughs> then like your last thing is like, you know, Street Fighter or something or, you know, Dagon. He was also Gomez, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm looking at his credits and his most famous credit is Street Fighter the movie. Aww. That's I mean, to be fair, it's the same with the actor for... That's a, that's a timeless movie, though, Street Fighter the movie. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> it's it's that, timeless. I mean, I guess that's true. There will always be a Street Fighter. We're going to kick Bison's ass. <laughs> Dude, fuck. I'm trying to... Okay, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I need to talk about this. This has nothing to do with anything. I just need you guys to see this. Oh. Uh, I'm going to turn my webcam on, and I need to show you this because it, it's so fucking cool. I actually bought this... Re- oh, it's a Dagon poster board. No, no. I, it's uh, so. it's even cooler. So you guys know the t- the TV show uh, Dilbert? Oh, my God. <laughs> Fuck off. I'm not... What? Fuck Come off with your on. Dilbert pregnant goddamn it's, animation. So I, have the cell. I, bought, I bought an animation cell of pregnant Dilbert. <laughs> and I really wanted to show you guys because I think you could appreciate this. That's so Dilbert good. Pregbert. Dilbert, Dilbert Pregbert. Pregbert. I got like five so messages proud. from you one day that just said Dilbert Pregbert. Did I did I never tell you I bought I bought an animation? No, you did oh, eventually. I, I, I knew you I knew yeah. you fucking bought it. I just remember one day waking up and seeing a bunch of Discord DMs yeah. that just said <laughs> Brendan Pregbert Dilbert Pregnant Nanat. But Pregbert, pre- pregnant, <laughs> Dib- Pregbert, and I'm like, what oh, the fuck is me. happening, Pregbert? Cause, yeah, because Dylan's pre- D- Dilbert Pregbert, Berlin. Scott Adams's very own Eldritch Horror, Pregbert. Did Dagon impregnate him? I think he's another uh, racist man i can't remember <laughs> apparently he's not a very good man the dilbert guy oh no he's yeah not. that's right yeah i don't remember what exactly it's he was unfortunate up to, but it was... because now i own a animation <laughs> well no i remember he was complaining about censorship or something but it's like i understand people complaining about censorship but it's the guy who makes dilbert what the fuck is in dilbert that's <laughs> so terrifying well the pregnant isn't it just like office man has office oh no No, scott adams scott adams went on a giant racist tirade like he 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 went on like a whole thing well i didn't Um, i thought like the dilbert comic like not talking to him i thought the cop he's like they're shutting down like they're everything's i can't make dilbert anymore (laughs) when i thought dilbert was just like i can't find my stapler it's in your desk dilbert i must have forgotten because of the big weekend no that's not not how that no, the, the Dilbert's way crazier than that. He gets pregnant and then he has to go to court against aliens and uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin is there and he's the one deliberating the d- judges and shit. What? <laughs> I don't even know. I guess real? you have the cell, so I can't argue. I have the cell. I need to know this. Yeah. I. That's the only episode of Dilbert I've ever seen. And the only reason why I know of it is because Ten told me about the okay. episode where he gets pregnant. So. So this could be like the fucking Sherlock Holmes ape come episode, and it's meaningless. What? The the what? Wait, what? The Sherlock Holmes. Co- co- I, I I learned this actually fairly recently from from fucking Hakita because he's been watching the um Grenada Sherlock like episodes. There's a Sherlock called the Creeping Man, and like you know Sherlock has had some like the the actual run of it. 
has had some like runs like, okay, this is like a little bit supernatural or this is like a little strange. Yeah. This one is that there's an old man injecting himself with monkey semen so no. that he could fuck his no. young fiance. No. no. But it You're makes him lying. go on monkey rampages like, um, like Mr. Hyde. You're fucking. This is not You're... like Sherlock Holmes in the 22nd You're century. You're lying. At all. There's no way. Take your ass to the pondering spooky tapes channel. I have it timestamped. Oh my God. He injects oh himself with ape cum and so he becomes like a chimpanzee <laughs> werewolf. Oh my god, he's a chimpanzee werewolf. Look at that. So I could watch that and be like, oh yeah, Sherlock Holmes is fucking crazy. <laughs> There's a dude who's like high off ape cum. <laughs> oh my god, what? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> He's jumping around. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. He's, he's going that... fucking crazy. Oh, he's smashing shit. Yeah. <laughs> he's just going psycho. He's Holy on that curious shit. George Spice Melange. That's what happens. <laughs> he's full of cum. Yes. Oh, the so, dog is angry, dude. I so can't I think, watch. I this. think the Dilbert you watch. He's he runs on all fours and throws leaves around too. It's great. I think the Dilbert you saw is the equivalent of this. I think Dilbert is probably a boring, unremarkable comic. No, there's no way. I don't. You believe. you got the fucking ape come episode of, of Dilbert. <laughs> the ape come episode. <laughs> <laughs> the ape come episode of Dilbert. <sighs> Oh, God. It's like a long chasing, too. He has to run on fours for a long time. He does. It's a good scene. I'm so happy to know about Ape Cum. <laughs> well, I'm not happy, but... It's like, how do I get my virility back? Real bad. I have to inject myself with this. We have to stop him before he gets to that woman. Oh, is that supposed to be... I, I, for a second there, I forgot that this is Sherlock Holmes. I was just looking at a man going fucking nuts. That is a Sir Arthur Conan Doyle original. No, I'm looking at it right now, and it doesn't seem like in the original, The Adventure of the Creeping Man, he injects himself with cum. No, it's safe cum. No, I don't think so. I can't see cum. Like, all I'm seeing is that the creeper acts like a monkey. It's from the ape cum. And this adaptation is from Apecom. It contained a drug. <laughs> drug. No, yeah. It, it all it says is drug in the. This is book. just like the Garfield panel. That's the Wikipedia article being fucking polite. This is just like the Garfield panel where I, d d John drinks dog cum, and it's like you're going to have a healthy litter of puppies. And Jim Davis is like, no, it's a. It's a dog nutrient slurry. It's exactly that. Oh. He knew the fucking joke he was making. Takes a drug. Sperm produce. I don't. I don't think you so. You are just going into the protozoa hole. Oh, wait, never mind. I found it. You're right. Oh, there's there's monkey sperm. You know what I thought I'd see in Dagon? Speaking <laughs> of sperm and babies. No, no, um, no. Thought I'd see no, a fucked no. up demon baby. You know. Oh, I. Yeah. yeah. Little fish Did guys. not see a fucked. They mentioned like the Pregbert with uh, Dalgo a lot. Dag Dag uh. <laughs> Dagon Pregbert. Dagon Pregbert with Dalgo, yeah, they mentioned it a lot. What if Dagon was Pregbert. Dagon was Pregbert. They mentioned it a lot, but like you do see Vicky impale yes. herself with a knife to stop baby because she's covered in amber grease from from Dalgo, and like I, <sighs> you don't see a. I really thought this movie would have a fucked up like like they have fucked up well, fish they, people. He also kind of like not a fucked up fish baby. Dagon also sabotages himself at the end, doesn't he? Because at the end he's just fucking like. She's pregnant. She's standing there, and then Dagon's like, "Come over here!" And then he just sh like rips her all out of the fucking thing and brings her down before she can kill herself. But then he kind of kills her because he rips off her arms. There's no way she survived that unless she was a uh, fish. The, I don't know. The black oil can staunch the bleeding. Remember when Vicky lost her leg at the beginning and she survived through the blood loss? Yeah, because it is. Yeah, that that's right. Because it. It patched up her leg immediately. Yep, does the oh, Dagon oil yeah. fix up the bleeding? Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. That would make that wouldn't make sense. Oh, I it was always implied she was still alive. All I'm saying is if we told the United States military about the Dagon oil, we would not have an Innsmouth. <laughs> that could be that could be Dagon come, if anything. Dagon two, the United States military gets involved. Actually that did happen in dark corners of the earth when you look out the window and the underwater city of the deep ones and you see there's a submarine from the navy actively shelling the city already oh my god i love hoover and the fbi rolling up to shoot at fish people it was bat <laughs> it was bat shit in the tabletop it's still bat shit now there's deep ones coming on the boat we gotta shoot them all brendan question time oh yes oh yeah oh yes okay what fucked up fish person would you add to this movie 
that you did not uh, see in this movie. Seahorse. My mind like wants to steal from Davy Jones's crew is the problem. I want a seahorse. You want pregnant Dilbert? Fuck off. No, I didn't even think about that. I just think <laughs> seahorses look fucking crusty and weird. It would be cool. <laughs> you said seahorse after no Dilbert gets pregnant. Dilbert gets pregnant. I, I dude, like, I was actually like, not what do I know about, about that. I forgot. <laughs> no, I, I. Oh, they get pregnant. I didn't even fucking think about that. But you're right. Dilbert <laughs> Seahorse, send it to the Please Stop Talking Twitter if you want to draw a pregnant please, Dilbert please Seahorse. Oh, God. I don't want to really see it. You don't need to see that. And why every episode we ask for fucking And then put it in the glue trap. <laughs> no! <laughs> <laughs> but put pregnant Dilbert in a glue trap now. Anyway, Cicada, you were saying. Oh, my God. I was saying that the, uh, there's a movie called Humanoids from the Deep. I would have loved if they just had like straight up like oh. that kind of thing. I love Humanoids from the the oh, true. This movie, this movie did have the ending shot with the swimming. I know it is low budget, but I did feel like I would have seen a lot more of the like fishmen swimming. Yeah, it's because they're shambling around town most of the movie. I, I think that they couldn't. Uh, I don't think they had the budget to do a scene like that. Like truly, I, I think that they were kind of in a situation where they had to keep the creatures really far from the camera, or else. You could just probably tell that it looked fucked up. <laughs> when you, if you stop and look at them for too long, it does, it does like kind of lose its its magic a little bit. I guess. Yeah, like they usually do them well in the crowd shots. So see, like the big eyes popping out and go, oh, they look yeah. like weird actual fish people. A fish person I would want to add to this movie would be a Rankin Bass style claymation fish Hulk man, man who chases him for like a minute before falling <laughs> into the wall. I don't know why, but I really wanted this movie to have a Jason and the Argonauts style claymation moment. Oh, do you mean like in okay. like skeletons, like stop motion? Yeah, like skeleton, like Jason and the Argonauts or any of the Rankin Bass Christmas movies, like a, like Frost Spiders. Yes, like a Frost weird... Spiders has a little little fu a little fucked up critter at the yep, end. Just a weird moment where yeah. like there was just a weird almost eighties horror movie reminiscent like claymation monster that chases him for a minute before he gets tired and it's like, oh I need to I need a big fish to oh. like I don't know runs away or something. For how much they talk about how the how this movie is like super uh, uh like against CG because that's that's one thing they kept talking about. They were like no CG only and it's like dude you're that's not how this there were only Dagon's right there. There Dagon is right there. There were only two scenes that were like really kind of was like Dagon jumping up and then the tentacle the, face the weird lady. Te yeah. Dagon jumping up like a Freddy Fazbear jump scare. Oh, God, yeah, it, it did kind so of look like that. He did. He, it it did kind of look like Foxy thing. in FNAF too when he jumps over the counter. Oh god, uh. he does. That was Ban Ban Core. Oh, oh <laughs> <laughs> The mental damage we deal to you on a daily basis. I'm so sorry. That, uh, he did. It, he did it to himself. He played it. N nobody was. We were not behind Mandy. To, like telling him to play the game. Well, I mean, I was. Yeah, Brendan well, was whispering in my ear, like you should. You should. I was whispering in Mandy's ear. Play Bam Bam. Do it. Play Bam Bam. You should play Bam Bam. Oh, you're the fucked up one. I'm the fucked up one. You're yeah. the fucked up one. He could have been playing anything else, and you uh, decided to. The car was cool. I wish there was more stuff with the car in Dagon. Like the, the car he the briefly car? gets in. Like the, the car he gets in and it gets out of like three minutes later. You wanted more of yeah. the car? Oh, I know. No, I like him like piling through fish people in the crowd. Oh, kind of like a zombie I would movie. like that. I would yeah, like more that. car shenanigans, I think. I expected a little bit more. Because you got the one scene where the guy goes like ah, 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 on the windshield, but he just kind of slides around a little bit. The, the, that scene before then, actually, that jump scare got me when he was like, he just like pops out and he's like, ah! oh, yeah, he's looking at the window. She's like, come stay with me. <laughs> oh, yeah, and that dude's yeah, like, and then Rrr! he just pops out. I, that actually got me. I, did, I, I forgot about that jump scare. It's really good. Yeah, every th the real star of the movie is just the citizens of Innsmouth doing their thing. Yeah. And tolerating their local local drunk who just kind of goes up to them singing and they're just that's kind of like shuffling true, along. Actually. Dude, that's true, actually. That's so fucking funny that there's... The yeah, he comes up, he's like, oh, hey, guys. The, and they're, like, the, the, they're just kind of like shambling behind him. They they do not mind him. They don't give a shit about him. And then at one point, he's like, why don't they fucking kill you? And he's like, because I'm crazy and I'm drunk, dude. They don't yeah. care. I think, I think I said during the commentary track, I was like, they need an old man to feed them bread when they go into the sea. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> That's why they leave him alone. They need one old man to feed them bread. Do you? Do, do, I thought it was bad to feed bread to fish. Probably, yeah. When they Big get wheat like, says it's bad to feed bread to anything until it's Big a human wheat. being. Why would Why would Big Wheat say that? That's isn't that fish against don't their, have money. 
Don't feed any animal bread except you. That, I wonder what that but, means. Wouldn't that make less cells of the uh, bread? No, because you're like, oh, I've got to pay the bird tax. No, because fish can't buy bread. Yeah, but you buy bread for the Why would I do that? I've never bought bed, bread for fish. What's wrong with you? But if you... You think Why someone's you, done that? They've like I'm walked by a koi one. pond and gone, oh man, you got to go get bread. Oh, 100%. I fed, I fed bread to koi. <clears throat> so you have bought bread for them. No, I didn't buy it. Okay, that's why. You're, it's like you could get worms. I acquired bread. Well, mm. Do you get, gas stations probably don't sell worms in most areas, I yeah, guess. Bait shops. No, they, they do. No, the it, it probably depends have, on where you live. Like, oh, Brendan and I, I might live in the area where the gas station always has some worms somewhere. Yeah, our, ours always do. That's how I, when I go fishing. Depends. Yeah. Only in small towns, not in the city. Not, well, I'm in Montreal and I, I can get bait. Okay, but big, big city. Uh, what? Montreal is a big, big city. What? I said big, big city. I said, okay, big, big city. Like, it makes sense. I don't live in a big, big oh, city. Oh, you mean, you mean it makes sense that they sell worms? Because I think it doesn't. Yeah, it does. Why? Who's eating worms? I don't know. My grandpa used to have a bait vending machine, so like, I don't know. Oh, right. I forgot about the worm vending machine. Yeah. I've never seen a vending machine I had with not either, but I worms. learned of them from Brendan. Oh, yeah. Let me find the picture. Uh, I have Strange. an old Polaroid of it, but it's a it's a bait vending machine that my grandpa... My grandpa ran a bait shop for a little while. I remember that, yeah. Um, And I used to help him pack the worms, and he used to also have a crawfish pond behind the trailer, and uh, me and my brother would take the crawfish and make them fight. Like, uh, you were like Selena Gomez in the Princess... A protection program. Yes, whatever that is. Brendan, we gotta get you the. You need to ride the worms today. You need to be the Quiznos hat rack. I thought you. I thought we were talking about Dune for a second with all the worm talk. Come be the Quiznart heart attack. We got the subs. Oh no! We got a pepper bar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here it is. I'm pondering. I put it in there. It's the uh, bait shop vending oh, wow. machine. Oh. Nobody ever came except for my grandpa's friends. It's like the only bait vending machine of its kind. Oh, there were a ton of them, like everywhere. Like, this was this yeah. was a super small town, so like there were like three bait shops in town. I just feel like this would be a bad idea. It was a bad idea. <laughs> yeah. <Terrible> idea. <laughs> it's a no, no, nobody ever bought worms. The worms kept dying, so we'd replace them. Yeah, that that just seems like. I mean, to be fair, that probably happens in most places where they sell worms, like convenience stores. This was like a trailer park, but it wasn't a big trailer park. It was three trailers my grandparents owned that were in the middle of town. What's the MSRP on worms? Like when, when you buy, when, when a shop buy, like, do you make money off of worms if you carry worms? I would think so. I would like think how much is a, a good how return much is, on investment. How much is a worm just like from the manufacturer? From so what, what we're saying is Dagon should have. <laughs> Had a doing? worm vending machine yes. in the middle of the movie yeah. for the townsfolk. Yeah, so they can have a little snack. They can just all. It did have a laptop yeah. and a Nokia phone, so it makes sense. Yeah, I mean, it, it, this is in the two thousand. This is uh, in the two thousands. The this movie happens right, so you could have easily, easily had a little water cooler and a live bait thing in that the, live uh, bait vending machine is from like two thousand. That photo's like from two thousand three. There you go. Mm-hmm. I, I, I want to now I want a scene where the um the the civilians of the town are literally lined up at the bait vending machine and just making fish noises I like do. they just start getting pissed at it and shaking it but they're like worm, worm, worm. I don't know how to make wet fish man noises real I do like the one fish man that was just a seagull <laughs> I do like the seagull it make funny noises it made a, he just made a seagull call as he ran by the window. <laughs> and that one who barked like a seal was fun too. Like they had such a variety of weird sea life stuff. It wasn't just fish. Can we, it was mainly fish. Thinking about the uh, little boy in the wet house and how like he's like the other completely normal human, but I'm wondering if they just didn't want to put prosthetics on like the, the kid. Well, with um our main character, with Mandark, he didn't have gills till he was older. True. So maybe it's like some kids. Oh, it, you're it, right. was the same in, it was the same in Shadow over Innsmouth where it's like he reads it and he goes, oh, it's some like some people are really fucked up and they're born. Some look like a normal human being, but then later on they start morphing into a fish man. Yeah, and but but also like the the kid at the end, the kid does show up at the end during the the freaks. Yeah, uh, like running around and screaming bit, and they're like he's there with his like the face of somebody else. Yeah, like even Papa Mind Flayer. Yeah. Uh, oh God, he looks so <laughs> bad. Uh, Uxie was saying like, oh yeah, she could have, he could have gone to the sea by now, but he's sticking around. And he's like still able to walk and he's much, much older yeah. than the main character. But he's still got a humanoid shape to him. 
love that they just have a bunch of reptiles in their house too and amphibians like just salamanders and frogs just all up in the wet house oh they do have dude that it, there's oh my god the way he just pushes the, the wet house can fit so many creatures in it we love the wet house this is very wet it's house. weird that the the um the the kid with the in the wet house with the dad and everything it's like a weird way of like like really empathizing or like showing empathy for these like weird fish people because like it's yeah. you know what i mean like it's just sort of oh, like yeah that's just that kid's dad and stuff you know and it's like yeah he because he kills his dad with like he basically saws him with the with the top of the toilet lid and just fucking to be fair right he gets karmic dad. justice for killing that kid's tentacle mind flare dad because he does have to go into the big wet hole after getting burned <laughs> he does go in the big wet hole fuck up in the wet house you go into the and wet he hole looks like that i had to feel pretty nice you know, yeah. after setting yourself on fire and then jumping in the hole, you know, it must have felt pretty bad when he had to become a fish. I don't know. He kind of accepts it at the end, though, and he he killed it. He tried to kill himself, didn't work, and then he was just like, "Fuck it, I guess I'm a fish. I'm going to Dagon Place now." What do you reckon that's like? What do you reckon his home is like? Are there like? But it's just a 1950s like grandma's home. Once you get into the hole and like it just leaves, and Dagon's just making like a freshly baked pie. Oh, and so Paul he just like floats off of the ground towards the pie wafting smell, and he's just like, oh fuck <laughs> yeah, Dagon pie. Mm, smells exquisite, and then he just floats over there. Do you think they have like a GameStop? They got a Dagon GameStop. They got a Dagon <laughs> Best Buy. They got a Dagon Walmart. Yeah, it's, it doesn't sound that bad because like the way they talk about like living with Dagon it seems kind of like a nice change of pace I don't know they keep being like oh yeah you live forever and everybody's in harmony and happy and you get so much fish you can eat the fish it doesn't seem like that much of a bad deal the only thing is that you look ugly like I'd take that I'd take looking I ugly. wouldn't take that because I like playing video games so what? video games ain't work underwater <laughs> They got ain't making could. the game fish advance. What if they could? I'm not going to be playing Legacy of Fish 2 with Fish Kaczynski what, in there. You, you, the, the fish can make fish their Kaczynski. own fucking video game. Yeah, fish well, because Ted wait. Kaczynski is in Legacy of Goku 2, so deep cut. Oh, oh man. man. Your lore is strong. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a lore warrior. You're a lot. I am. I know. Thank you. To be around. I know. You're a lot to be around tonight. I know. You're, Very powerful. You have some po I've, I have, have some potent, potent vile energies. Fucking yeah, it's disgusting. I can the the smell of the pie has been just fucking. It, it's changed now. It's the smell of your fucking awful. I'm making awful nasty knowledge. pastries in my boy oven. You can't deal with it. I'm sorry. <laughs> boy oven is <laughs> nasty. Making nasty oh. pastries in my boy oven. Brent Daniel is Pregbert. I'm sorry. Brendan, what do you think Ken Bone would think of this movie? Ken Bone would fucking love this movie because at the end of the movie, everybody is a beautiful human submarine. I don't know about Paul. Is <laughs> Paul a beautiful human submarine, really? Think about it. He's hiding a fish man inside of him. No, he's not. What? He, he, it, 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 under his Yo, human skin, him? he's a fish man on the inside, yeah. Yeah, his gills did come out. I wonder where he is now. Where, is Ken Bone still? Ken Bone is hanging out with Dagon under the sea in the big wet hole. <laughs> Do you think they're dating? Ken Bone and Dagon, are we shipping here? Are we going to ship Ken Bone, famous like 50 minutes of fame, presidential election 2016, Ken Bone and Dagon, Eldritch Horror from Beneath the Sea? I mean, sure. I kind of like it. I kind of like it. I kind of vibe with I Ken Bone like in a sweater and I mean, Dagon in a matching sweater. Ken Bone, I mean, they're both into pregnant... They're, they're, they're both, both into really pregnant. into pregnancy yeah they're both into pregnancy so i mean it kind of works for them you know they can both bond over that they can both talk about the slick the, wet the, black the, oil that uh, they got emits i don't this <laughs> uh, what a fuck was it night <laughs> what was the black goo black goo started at the very beginning of the movie and it was also like implied that vicky was covered in it and that was like the oh she got yeah. fucked up and that's why when barbara got out of the dagon hole she was covered in the black goo because i think the black goo was supposed to represent like they, 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 you are with Dagon Child now. All right, Dagon got many do fish. This. I guess that means the we whole town's going to be a family. What, my son? Is this movie art or cool? Cool. This is a tough one. I, 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 I'm leaning towards I, cool with potential. There's art I'm not fully recognizing. I, I I find the I think the first forty minutes are art, but then it becomes cool. But I feel like the stink of cool, the reek of cool is stronger than art that that like the a after the after the flashback when it like when it comes back and the movie continues i feel like it becomes cool and then it just doesn't let up 
I'm so happy Cicada's here and has no fucking idea about the concept of cooler oh, yeah. art. Yeah. Basically, the <laughs> I, just, I didn't even think about that, but basically, uh, how we rate movies, instead of recommending them, we we say that they're art or cool, and there's no in-between, and they can't be both. Can they be neither? No. They, it, it's either one. It's <laughs> either or. It has to be. Uh. And that this applies to every movie of all time. It's either cool or art. I would say cool. More so than art. I mean, there's like some like kind of artistic shots, I think, and stuff like that. But like, I mean, at the end of the day, like it's just sort of like a a slightly plussed up made for TV sci fi movie, you know? Like, it's uh, yeah. uh, Um, cool. I'm gonna I'm gonna say cool. There, this was not art. This was fart. So I'd say cool. No, no. Yeah, Yeah, I shut up. I mean, I I I think overall, like I. I wouldn't watch it again. I'm glad I got to see it. Uh, it, 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 it is, it evokes more cool than art, especially with the way that the main character is portrayed. If the horror was more creeping and, uh, less like slapstick, I would definitely probably lean more towards art, but like the everything from toe to tip, from tentacle to tentacle, this son of a bitch is cool. So that's Dagon. Mm. Next time we're doing critters for, <laughs> yeah, um, so fucking sick and tired, but also this is, uh, this is, uh, this is like partly on you, Brendan, mm-hmm. but it's mostly on the, the people who are voting for these fucking movies hey, on Patreon. If you see a movie I'm, on the Patreon and it's more of a Brendan movie, vote for it because I love hey, it. Don't, no, 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 I'm inflating the stop. vote making round. No, it's all, it's too, I mean, it's too fucking late. You already fucking, <laughs> you, you, already you made us watch Tremors. You made us watch this. Now you've made us, <laughs> what's the other movie you said you wanted us to watch? Fucking, uh, what was it? You or, no, During the commentary. Uh, oh shit, oh, what was that movie? It wasn't even Joe Dirt. <laughs> Joe Dirt. I, we're not doing Joe Dirt. <laughs> we're not doing Joe Dirt either. What if people vote? What if people write on Joe Dirt? So though? for my birthday, we're going to do Joe Dirt for pondering. No. Okay. We're done here. We're not doing that. <laughs> either way. Critters 4 is the next movie. The next the next poll for the month after that is going to come out on the Patreon. If you're part of the $5 and above tiers, you can vote. And until then, have a great one. Okay. Oh, wait. Cicada, do you want to? <laughs> yeah. I don't have anything to plug right now. <laughs> Go listen to uh, music. Yeah, listen to any music. Make me Open mad. Spotify right now. Watch okay. the first Bye-bye. half of Pulse. Yeah, yeah. We'll stop. Watch the first half of Pulse <laughs> and then turn that and shit then off. And then stop. <laughs> then stop when you get bored. Stop when they start making it go outside of guy's bedroom. Yes. <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening. This episode would not have been possible without the help from our patrons, such as Alan Diver, Arta Vagin, Beck Davis, Bjur, Bland But Funny, Boo Poo Lou, Brain Soup, Caffeine Addicted Chemist, Cassandra Crash, Chris Chapman, Christian Van Engen, Delling City, Dog Named Bear, DX Studios, Echo Stalker, Eric Scott Gillies, Ethereal, Generic Phoenix, Guy Beam, Handsome Destiny, Kawaii Boy Toy, Lam Deman, Leo the Geotech, Mediocre Client, Mr. Shirt, Random Diamonds, Rocco the Raccoon, Smeet Mono, Spherical May, The Frost Days, Ulbert, Winnie Rab, and Will 9455. Thanks so much for listening, and we'll see you next time.